हेलो स्टूडेंट्स टूडे टॉपिक परफेक्ट कॉम्पिटिशन लेट स्टार्ट परफेक्ट कॉम्पिटिशन इज अ मार्केट स्ट्रक्चर वेर देर आर लार्ज नंबर ऑफ बायर्स एंड सेलर्स डीलिंग इन होमोजीनियस प्रोडक्ट एंड प्राइस ऑफ सच प्रोडक्ट इज डिटरमाइंड बाय द मार्केट फोर्सेस दैट इज डिमांड एंड सप्लाई लेट्स टेक एन एग्जाम्पल यू वॉन्ट अ स्टेशनरी प्रोडक्ट फ्रॉम द मार्केट and if you buy it from a shopkeeper you have to pay rupees 5 for that product agar koi shopkeeper same product ke liye 6 rupees charge karega to koi bhi student usse us product ko buy nahi karega aur agar koi shopkeeper usko 5 ki jagah 4 rupees mein sell karega to sabhi students usi se us product ko buy karenge so परफेक्ट कंपटीशन एक ऐसा मार्केट स्ट्रक्चर है जहां जो प्राइस चार्ज होता है वो सेम प्राइस ही चार्ज होता है इट इज इेशनल टू लोअर डाउन द प्राइस ऑफ द प्रोडक्ट सो देयर प्रिवेल्स ओनली वन प्राइस ऑफ अ प्रोडक्ट इन द मार्केट लेट्स डिस्कस कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स और इजम्स ऑफ परफेक्ट कॉम्पिटिशन फर्स्ट कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स लार्ज नंबर ऑफ बायर्स and sellers perfect competition mein number of buyers or sellers dono hi kafi zyada hote hain but jo unka size hai wo relatively small hota hai no buyer or no seller is that large that can affect the market forces next comes homogeneous product इस मार्केट में जो प्रोडक्ट होता है वो होमोजीनियस होता है यानी कि सभी सेलर्स के पास में जो प्रोडक्ट है वो ऑलमोस्ट सेम है अगर हम ग्रेन मार्केट की बात करते हैं आप राइस की पर्लसेस की या फिर व्हीट की बात करते हो तो वो प्रोडक्ट हर एक डीलर के पास ऑलमोस्ट सेम होता है नेक्स्ट कम परफेक्ट नॉलेज buyers and sellers are fully aware of the price of the product in the market buyers ko complete knowledge hoti hai ki kitna price us product ke liye seller charge karega aur seller ko bhi complete knowledge hoti hai apne buyer ki knowledge ki uski awareness ki next comes free entry and exit of firms under perfect competition any new firm can enter the industry or any firm can exit the industry so there is free entry and exit of firms there are no regulations on entry and exit of the firms next comes free from checks buyers and sellers are free from checks or any restrictions with regard to buying and selling of the product next comes perfect mobility another important assumption of perfect competition is that this market is perfectly mobile perfect mobility of factors as well as goods and services next lack of transport cost परफेक्ट कॉम्पिटिशन मार्केट में कॉस्ट ऑफ ट्रांसपोर्ट प्रोडक्ट के प्राइस को इन्फ्लुएंस नहीं करती है नेक्स्ट लैक ऑफ सेलिंग कॉस्ट एक सेलर एडवर्टीजमेंट और पब्लिसिटी पर परफेक्ट कॉम्पिटिशन मार्केट में स्पेंड नहीं करता बिकॉज उनका जो प्रोडक्ट है वो होमोजीनियस प्रोडक्ट ही है देर इज नो नीड टू इनकर सच सेलिंग कॉस्ट नेक्स्ट कम्स same price as i told you price is determined by the market forces demand and supply so once the price is determined that price is accepted by each and every firm present in the industry next comes demand and revenue in perfect competition dekhiye perfect competition market mein एवरेज रेवेन्यू और मार्जिनल रेवेन्यू कर्व को इन करते हैं और एक्स एक्सिस के पैरलर होते हैं इट मीन्स डिमांड इज कंप्लीटली इलास्टिक यू कैन सेल एनी अमाउंट ऑफ गुड्स एट प्रीवेलिंग प्राइस सो टू वाइटल कंक्लूजन आर देर 
a firm under perfect competition is a price taker not a price maker price maker industry ki market forces hoti hain aur har firm ko usi price ko accept karna padta hai bahut sare reasons hain ki firm us price ko accept kyu karti hai number of firms bahut zyada hain koi bhi firm jo hai wo influence nahi karti hai on market forces ko to they have to accept the price homogeneous product mein wo deal karte hain to differential price ka question रेज ही नहीं होता और अगर कोई फर्म सोचे कि वो कम प्राइस फिक्स कर ले तो इेशनल डिसीजन होगा क्योंकि उनके पास जो सप्लाई होगी वो लिमिटेड होगी सो आफ्टर दैट प्राइस फिर से मूव हो जाएगा और वो पर्टिकुलर उसी फर्म का लॉस होगा और जो दूसरा कंक्लूजन यहां से क्लियर होता है वो है जो डिमांड कब है वो परफेक्टली इलास्टिक है अगर यहाँ पे मैं इलास्टिसिटी ऑफ डिमांड की बात करूं तो वो क्या है इनफाइनाइट है फॉर्म की इंटायर आउटपुट जो है एग्जिस्टिंग प्राइस पर ही डिमांडेड है प्राइस डिटर्मिनेशन अंडर परफेक्ट कॉम्पिटिशन Equilibrium price is determined at that point where aggregate demand for the commodity is equal to the aggregate supply. So, एक टेबल की हेल्प से इस कॉन्सेप्ट को क्लियर करते हैं इस टेबल में हम तीन कॉलम बनाएंगे प्राइस सप्लाई एंड डिमांड सपोज प्राइस इज फाइव रुपीज फॉर अ प्रोडक्ट देन सप्लायर इज रेडी टू सप्लाई फिफ्टी यूनिट्स but demand is 10 units if price falls to 4 supply is reduced to 40 but demand is extended to 20 same as as per law of demand and law of supply we constructed that table and equilibrium वहां इस्टेब्लिश होगा जहां डिमांड और सप्लाई मैच करेगी यानी कि एट प्राइस थ्री डिमांड इक्वेट्स सप्लाई सो ऑन एक्स वाई प्लेन एक्स एक्सेस पे हम आउटपुट को शो करेंगे और वाई एक्सेस पे हम प्राइस को शो करेंगे सो दिस इज आर डिमांड कर्व एंड दिस इज आर सप्लाई कर्व फेयर डिमांड मेड सप्लाई दिस इज इक्विलिब्रियम प्राइस दिस इज इक्विलिब्रियम आउटपुट एंड प्राइस इफ प्राइस इज मोर देन ओ पी देन देयर वुड बी अ सिचुएशन ऑफ सर प्लस रीजन बींग डिमांड इज लेस देन सप्लाई एंड इफ प्राइस falls less than op then supply is less in comparison to demand there would be shortage in the industry so equilibrium price is op as i told you firm is a price taker not a price maker so first diagram is industry and the second is firm demand and supply forces in industry determined price as depicted by diagram and such price is accepted by each and every firm present in the industry so we cleared price is determined where demand and supply equates what would be effect of change in this demand and supply on price if demand for a commodity rises price will also rise and if demand for a commodity falls price will also falls let's clear it with diagram we are plotting demand curve and supply curve this is dd demand curve and supply curve equilibrium price and equilibrium output if demand rises then new demand curve would be d1 d1 equilibrium will shift from e to e1 it means price would be op1 at quantity oq1 and if demand falls 
then it would be D to D to demand curve and price will fall to OP2 level and quantity OQ2 level. Same with supply. If supply rises, then price will fall. And if supply falls, price will rise. This is our demand curves and supply curve. We have established equilibrium. If supply falls to S2, then price will rise to P1 level. And if supply raises to S1, then price will be OP2. So, price is affected by change in demand and change in supply. Next, importance of time element. Perfect competition mein time element ki kya importance hai. Time element ki agar hum baat kare, to hum usko four parts mein divide kar denge. First, very short period. Next, short period. Then, long period. And the last is very long period. Price charged in very short period is market price. Price charged in short period is subnormal price. Price charged in long period is known as normal price. And in very long period, it is known as secular price. So, very short period kya hota hai? Very short period is that time period in which supply of a commodity cannot be increased beyond its existing stock. Let's take an example. Suppose you are ordering in your canteen that you need 100 samosas till 11 and you are ordering it at 10.30. Then this is instance of very short period. Supply cannot be increased more than existing stock. Next comes short period. It is that time period in which supply of a commodity can be increased up to existing capacity. When you are providing that much time that supply could be adjusted according to the existing capacity. Take an example if you are ordering some cakes at a bakery then cakes could be supplied in two or three days according to the capacity of the bakery. Next comes long period. It refers to that time period in which supply of a commodity can be increased or decreased according to the changed demand. Here supply is completely elastic because there is enough time to adjust production capacity as well. And very long period is comprised of all these very short, short and long periods. Next comes price determination in very short period. That price which is determined in very short period is known as market price. So, two parts may I explain karte hai. First is perishable goods. Perishable goods are those goods which perish very quickly. For example, fresh vegetables, milk, fruits, etc. So, perishable goods ki supply ki agar hum baat kare, to it is constant. Supply of perishable goods is constant. So, market price depends upon demand of such commodities where demand meets supply that is the equilibrium price if demand is more then price would be high but if demand is less then price would be less second durable goods 
durable goods are those goods which can be stored for a long time example soap wheat oil tea leaves etc so supply curve of durable goods is like this it means supply can be raised up to existing stock but after a particular level it would be constant so market price depends upon demand where demand meets supply this is the equilibrium price if demand increases price also increases but if demand is more than stock say d3 then price will rise but quantity will not get rise next comes price determination in short period so such price is known as subnormal price while determining subnormal price this is our supply curve and price is determined where demand meets supply hereby supply could be increased depending upon existing capacity so if demand is high price would also get high and if demand is less then price will fall to op2 level next price determination in long period such price is known as normal price here demand and supply these forces act freely in the market as per demand supply could be adjusted so this is long run supply curve so when demand meet supply price is determined that is normal price if price rises to op1 then demand would be oq1 but supply available would be oq2 then producer will get forced to reduce the price to op1 level and if price is fixed at op2 level then supply is short but demand is more and that situation will push the price back to op level so this is long period normal price determination students if you find this video useful then please like the video and share with others and don't forget to subscribe the channel